everyone. Welcome back to The Biblical Layman. My name is Ricardo Escobar. I want to first and foremost, above all, say thank you so much for taking your time to watch this video. So in this video, I want to uh, talk about Soteriology 101, Dr. Lane Flowers. Um, specifically, I want to look at one of the videos and point something out to you um, that you and hopefully will encourage you to um, keep your keep your ears um, you know, sharp and uh, keep Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Biblical Layman. My name is Ricardo Escobar. I want to first and foremost, above all, say thank you so much for taking your time to watch this video. So in this video, I want to look at uh, something that Soteriology 101, Dr. Layton Flowers said um, in regards to Ephesians chapter 1. And the reason I want to do this is because I need to point out to my audience and all those who are willing to come watch me, something that Layton constantly does that I think a lot of people don't realize and it ends up deceiving them. Now, I'm not saying that he's doing it to deceive people. That's not what I'm saying. I don't know his intentions. But if you're not listening to Layton and also biblically as well, if you're not checking what he's saying in, in accordance to the Bible, then you will fall for some of the things that um, he he has fallen for himself, some of the uh, humanistic and naturalistic thinking that he's uh, fallen for, okay? And it's not just with Leighton, it's with anybody on YouTube, even myself. Anything I say, please check it with the scriptures, go to the Lord, do your own research, be good Bereans. But Leighton will do this thing where he will throw out some truths, you know, like a half but he won't throw out all the truth. Or he'll say something that he just doesn't um, agree with or believe, and he'll throw it out there in the video. And it makes sense. Like it, on a humanistic kind of, you know, naturalistic aspect, it makes sense. But then when you look at the Bible, you realize, wait, the Bible actually says the opposite of what you just said. And so I need to point that out to people so that moving forward, whoever going to listen to him or watch him uh, would hopefully think critically, but more important, biblically about what he's saying. So let me not waste any more time. Let me just play the clip. See if you can find what he said that is wrong, that the Bible actually proves uh, that actually is the Bible's opposite in, in opposition to what he said. See if you can pick it up. It's, it's not, this is not rocket surgery, as they say. Right. This is this is very, very simple. If you understand it from our perspective, I'm not trying to be derogatory. I'm just saying you've got to understand both sides of the aisle in order to bring critique. And apparently some Calvinists don't even understand what we're trying to say. Yes, he chose the faithful in Christ Jesus to be made holy and blameless. And this was his plan from the beginning of the world, from the very foundation of the world. God's plan, his 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 destiny for those who are in Christ through faith is that we would be made holy and blameless. We all agree with that. But it's not just some arbitrary choice. It's not some unilateral pick before creation like a divine lottery of sorts. He picks the faithful who are in Christ Jesus to be made holy and blameless. Grace to you and peace from our God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, the Father of Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. The term in Christ is used do over a dozen times in the sentence that we're getting into here. Just as he chose us in him, in Christ, who is the us in him? People unilaterally pick before they're ever born or the faithful in Christ Jesus, which makes more sense. I didn't exist before the foundation of the world. Did you? I'm not an eternally existent one. Christ is. Christ is the eternally existent elect one. Okay. He is our head. He's the, you want to talk about federal headship. Christ is our federal head. He existed before the foundation of the world. I didn't. You can't select somebody who doesn't exist. Right. So what? Okay. So hopefully you caught it. Maybe you didn't. He said, I don't exist before the foundation of the world. You don't exist before the foundation of the world. Only Christ does. Christ is the elect one. Now, is it true that Christ is the elect one? Yes. No one would deny that. Christ is the elect one. Isaiah talks about the chosen, the suffering servant, and there's other places in the Old Testament where Christ is the elect one. No problem here from any Calvinist, hopefully, or Arminian or anybody else. Christ is the elect one. So where's the problem? Well, he also said um, that he wasn't born before the foundation of the world. You're not born before the foundation of the world. And therefore you can't choose somebody who wasn't born before the foundation of the world. Right? Well, that sounds true. Like, yeah, I mean, if you're not born, you can't be chosen. That sounds accurate and correct. Right. But 
does the Bible say that? Or does the Bible actually say the opposite? It says the opposite, actually. If you think about what he says and you just, just quickly scan the Bible through your mind, right? Are there people in the Bible that were chosen, even if it's not for salvation, okay? Even if it's not for salvation, were they chosen before they were born, before they were created? Yes. Yes, they were, right? Isaac, Isaac was chosen before he was born. Jacob was chosen before he was born, right? Um, Paul was born, was chosen before he was born. Jeremiah was chosen before he was born, right? That's four. And there, there are more, but those four already, I think, I think one demolishes his statement, but those four certainly prove Leighton's statement to be wrong. Okay. And, and this and this really brings a wrench, as it were to his interpretation of Ephesians 1 because one of his big you know what he he thinks he one of the big things about Ephesians 1 that defeats Calvinism is that you can't be chosen before the foundation of the world that we didn't exist so we can't be chosen but the bible strictly says that people are chosen before the foundation of the world and even if you go to 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9 Paul said God who called us and saved us not according to our works, but according to his purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. And verse 10 says, and now is being manifested. So the Bible speaks in this language where God is making choices, giving grace and purpose before people are born, before the foundation of the world. And then these, these purposes, this grace, right? Salvation and all of these things that God prepared and, and predestined, predetermined before the world are coming to pass they're being played out in time once the world is now founded and created and time exists those things are being played out so yes god can certainly choose people before they are born okay because and and i want to shout out to consistent calvinist a friend of mine who who really explained this to me very well i, I think really brighten up my understanding here is it's not that someone is bringing people to god and saying here choose who you want right? But everybody has their life in God. He is their creator. And so God is not choosing among a, among a pool of people, right? But he is creating people for specific purposes, right? He created Isaac to carry out the covenant, right? He chose Isaac before he was born. He told Abraham, I will give you a son, not, you know, someone presented me Isaac and, and, and Esau, and I had to choose between them. No, no. I will give you a son. I will bring forth life from a dead womb and give you a son. And this son I've chosen to carry out my covenant, right? So this is how the Bible speaks. And this is how God works. God not only chooses the bus or the plane as Leighton likes to use as an example on Ephesians one, he doesn't just create the bus and the plane. And then, you know, give out the invitation and then dust his hands off and go, okay, I'll just wait here and see who gets on this bus and plane that I've prepared. No, he creates the bus and the plane and he creates the people who will get on the bus and the plane. And as well, uh, on the other side, those that won't, right? He made a covenant with Abraham and he didn't only choose the covenant, he chose whom he would make the covenant with. And then he chose whom would carry out that covenant, Isaac, and then Jacob right? So he's choosing to carry out this covenant of blessing the nations of the land of salvation of all of carrying the Messiah, all these things. That's the plan. And then he chooses who will carry out that plan because our God is a God of intentionality. When he saves, he saves his people. He doesn't merely make it, uh, you know, available or potential, you know, salvation, right? He's not just out here, just here, come on and get on my bus, my plane. Let's see who's going to get on there, right? No, he makes the plane, the bus, the fortress. And the Bible uses this word call, th th this word, call, right? He calls Romans 9, Romans 8, right? Those that he calls, those that he created for his glory are the ones that will get on the bus. Now, I didn't want to make this video long, but I want to really quick, really quickly just read this for you to to and hopefully it will make sense to what I've been saying all along. It comes from Isaiah 43. Listen to this. He says, um, 
But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, notice there, he who created you, right? He didn't, someone didn't bring Jacob to him and say, do you want Jacob? Do you want to choose Jacob, right? But he created Jacob, right? He who created you, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not for I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name. You are mine, right? Then I want to skip down here um, to verse four really quickly. Because you are precious in my eyes and honored and I love you, I give men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life, right? He, he created these people for specific purposes. He loves them, right? And this is similar language to Ephesians 1 when it says in love, he predestined us, right? This is, this is the motivation of God for his people. And in verse five, he says, fear not for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. Now listen to verse 7. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Right? So these are the people that God created for his glory. These are the ones he calls by name. This is further repeated in Acts 15. James quotes from the prophets. And then Paul, same idea here, that it's not that God is looking out and choosing people. No, he's created people. He's creating people that he will save in and through Jesus Christ. So when Ephesians 1 says a plan for the fullness of time, this plan of salvation, which he set forth in Christ Jesus, that's Ephesians 1 verse 10, a plan for the fullness of time, which he set forth in Christ Jesus in this plan of redemption, of the forgiveness, of the election, of the blessing, of the grace, of all of these beautiful things, of the inheritance, all of these beautiful things. It's not just the plan being created or made, but also the people with this plan. That's why, again, Christ can say, I've come down from heaven to do the will of my father, that I lose none of all that he has given me. And so, guys, when you're listening to Leighton Flowers, I'm not saying don't listen to him. You can, you can do as you please if you want to listen to him. But when you do, listen to him critically, and but most important, listen to him biblically. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for tuning in. Please hit that like and subscribe button. Until next time, this is the Biblical Lehman. God bless you.